Snake wasn't that puzzle. Big shout out to my nigga SPI, Spotter Low. You know, I'm in the black box. Had to come through, tap in, show love one time. Yeah, y'all make sure y'all subscribe. Stay tuned. All that. Uh, Trick Daddy recently accused you of working as a prison guard at one point, Rick. Is there any truth to that? No, that's not true. But that's that's disappointing to hear that he said that. He said that? That's what the question is, yeah. That's crazy. It's not true, man, but you know, dog a sucker and he mad that, you know, I done came out of nowhere and just, you know, took over the streets like that, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm a see dog when I see dog, but dog don't want no problems, man. You were were you a correctional officer at one point? I was, yeah. So going all the way back. When was that? How long ago? Um, maybe when I was twenty. Twenty years old. Yeah. What what kind of people were in there? You know, I, I didn't get, really get to make it to the the prison. Mm -hmm. Cause you got to go through training and all that, and I didn't last long. Right. I may have last four months. Right. Before they said I, you know. Yeah. I was a little tardy. Mm -hmm. What made you want to do that? One of my big homies. One of my big homies had just got in trouble, and a lot of people, a lot of things were going on, and mm -hmm. he just suggested it. You and fuck I, with it or no? No, nah, it was, no, nah, I didn't. Anything you got to really do, and you fucking running and jogging and. Yeah. All of that shit, man. I was I missed a few days. What was your paycheck a week then? It was horrendous. How much? It's like 25K a year, I saw no, right? some shit like 500 bucks every two weeks. Think about it is, why did he lie, cuz, in the first place? Like, how, like this, look, this, this is what I learned. This is what I learned, man, on my mama mama. These niggas, do you see how adamantly he told that lie? Initially, I ain't nothing like you fucking rap niggas. He had the glasses though, but minus the glasses, he sold that lie without blinking. They say Trick Daddy is the one that blew the whistle and said Cuz used to be the police. Cuz say he don't know why he would say that. Like, the whole time, I, this is how I live my life, Cuz. Uh, Outside of, you know, incrimination or things of that nature, you ask me a question about something in my past, favorable or not, if it's facts, it's head on, like, yep, now what? This is what it is, like, if you ended up being the guy that came out wearing them Lokes on being Rick Ross the big boss and the truth of the matter is at some point in the past you used to participate in enforcing the law you should be confident throughout that whole process of claiming everything you've been through that's all I, that's, I don't get it and then after experiencing a certain amount of success having the maturity and the comfort and the confidence just to admit it. T.I. Tip could take notes, take lessons. At least he came to a point where he admitted it. But just imagine Vlad was catapulted to a level of success based on asking that same question. I'm not sure if he asked it in the exact same way, but he made that implication upon interviewing or speaking to Rick Ross and then allegedly a physical altercation ensued and Vlad sued Rick Ross and won six figure settlement and at that point in Vlad's career he was shot to another level and it's odd and crazy how since then he developed a reputation of people coming on his platform and incriminating themselves and this is the thing about it. Cud try to now he trying to mitigate. He like they asking you questions about it, and he trying to fit, you know back the questions off and talk about it was too much running. He didn't make it and all that. But let me tell you something. By the time the uh, there's no you don't get <laughs> unless you make it to the thing thing thing. Not only will you not have a salary of five hundred a week. But you don't get this handshake unless you make it past all the running and shit that he said he wasn't with. And just think, he was he got it done 
at that size. You got to applaud that. I raised a CO, a correctional officer, who hasn't been a correctional officer for a whole year, not even six months. So I'm quite familiar with the whole process. And it's amazing that Cuff uh, even accomplished it at that size. I find it funny how he tried to make it like, nah, I couldn't do the running. But if you get that handshake, that means that you accomplished the running uh, to a T. You know what it also means? At least in the California correctional department, it means that you have qualified as a marksman with handgun and long range rifles though. Just think about I've raised somebody since the, from they was two years old. Little boy called me daddy, my son, my first son taught me how to be a father, my first exercising to be a father. I know everything about his life since he was two years old. All his ins, outs, ups, downs, cans, can'ts, do's, don'ts, wills, wants. And now he's a correctional officer that could take his pistol anywhere on the plane and all that. <laughs> And he can qualify from like 100 yards with the long thing. Did his thing with the rifle because you never know when you're a CO. They might throw you up in that tower. And when you're in the guard, when you when you the guard in the tower, you're responsible for man that M16. And this is one scenario that you have to be prepared to deal with. And this is the primary reason why they have a guard up in the tower, if you ask me. There could be a scenario where inmate is causing or potentially causing harm to a guard. And you have to be able to be at a long distance up in that tower and be able to hit the inmate and not the guard. So that's one thing about Rick Ross. If the process is are similar. He got that handshake. That means he know what he's doing with that thing. And we see how even within the Compton Police Department, I mean the Sheriff's Department, and other places, there are gangs even within law enforcement. Ever since the Vikings in Linwood, I can remember out here in Southern California. So, I mean, I don't understand why he had to lie. Why would you be ashamed of that? And if that's who you is, if that's what you were, you know, just claim it. I don't, I don't understand why a nigga lied. I ain't nothing like you fucking rap niggas. You know half the shit that twerk behind bars, meaning like the illegal shit can't go down without a CO. Then I swear to God, cause I'm tempted to think I gave him that little story cause long time ago he admitted it. This is some new shit where he just discussed it so candidly and then tried to field those questions. But um, a long time ago he came out and said, yeah, he admitted it. And he was like, it was like, um, they was like, why? Why did you do it? He was like, well, the reason is far more sinister than you can imagine. And at that point, I had commented that that would have been a good answer from the beginning because I could, you know, hypothesize and imagine a scenario where just what he just said, somebody behind bars, because he coming, you know what I'm saying, from this perspective of this big time D-boy. So it wasn't like beyond my imagination that even in the beginning, when it first came up that somebody that was doing some time, kind of like perhaps could have coaxed him into like going that route in order to establish something. Like, so if it is your past, it is your past. Now, once I said that, here it is years later, it seemed like Cuz coming with that same little script, right? You know, he may or may not. <clears throat> have been inspired by the way I commented on it. Um, however, he ain't said nothing like that until I said it. And 
I know for a fact that there are scenarios in real life where of people I'm aware of that went to prison for long periods of time and at the time they were sentenced they had children that were um, elementary school age and by the time their children were teen and young adult their sons have they still haven't come home but their sons have ended up in prison charged with uh, alongside their father from the streets operating uh, like major illegal enterprises and this not no CO but this is uh, allegedly an individual who went to prison and had a baby while he went to prison and by the time that baby was old enough to understand and be directed in a certain way it's alleged that the father had his son involved in you know who more could you trust into like from what you had going on and then from behind the wall the father received uh, more time than he was already serving and also the son on the street research received time so the idea of what actually can take place in this world is like way um, apparent to me and if it was a correction officer or a police officer at any point in your life and now you coming out like acting like you a menace a part of the other side of the culture without being deceptive or lying or denying that you have to be able to say I'm this and I used to be that otherwise that's where the fakeness come in at and then cause like just think about it they asked him that shit we gonna watch it again they asked him about the question and said Trick Daddy said it. Cuz talk bad about Trick Daddy and said when I see him, I'm going to see him like got threatening. So just look how far a nigga go with a lie though, bro. I don't get it. This crazy to me. Oh, my mama, mama. Oh, look, I was almost finna feed up, eating up because I had this set. But just look, look how hard a nigga go with a lie, not the truth. A lot, and then they got them glasses on. Could you imagine what kind of eyes he was making behind them glasses? <laughs> uh, Trick Daddy recently accused you of working as a prison guard at one point, Rick. Is there any truth to that? No, that's not true. But that's that's disappointing to hear that he said that. He said that. That's what the question said. Yeah. That's crazy. It's not true, man. But you know, dog a sucker, and he mad that you know I didn't came out of nowhere and just. You know, took over the streets like that, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm a see dog when I see dog, but dog don't want no problems, man. You were were you a correctional officer at one point? I was, yeah. So going all the way back. When was that? How long ago? Um, maybe when I was twenty. Twenty years old. Yeah. What what kind of people were in there? You know, I, I didn't get, really get to make it to the, the prison. Mm -hmm. Cause you gotta go through training and all that and I didn't last long. Right. I may have last four months. Right. Before they said I, you know. Yeah. I was a little tardy. Mm -hmm. What made you want to do that? One of my big homies. One of my big homies had just got in trouble. Tell the white boy don't a lot of, people, word he's a lot of things were going on, and mm -hmm. he just suggested it. You and fuck I, with it or no? Nah? No, nah, it was no. Nah, I didn't. Anything you gotta really do and you fucking running and jogging and yeah, all of that shit, man. I was I missed a few days. What was your paycheck a week then? It was horrendous. How much? It's like twenty five k a year. I saw no, right? some shit like five hundred bucks every two weeks. My mama, mama, mama do y'all like further realize? Cuz denying making it through the training process because he couldn't do the running or he wasn't with the running. However, yet he received. A salary of five hundred a week. That don't make no sense. I'm just saying. I just wanted to like trip on that one more time. You dig a lot. <laughs>